Hello there, it's great to have you here for this second uh, instalment of Writing to Help Yourself with me, Maria Franklin. I'm a creative writing teacher, I'm also an author and a poet. And this is my new monthly uh, video I'm offering on YouTube, also offered as a blog on my website, which is www.mariafranklin.co.uk and uh, the, the blog is under blog and writing to help yourself uh, and you can also sign up there for uh, my free booklet which is called The Seven Secrets to Achieving Your Writing Dreams. Uh, so combined with my blog and this video it's a monthly offering um, it's, it's to inspire other writers who want to use the power of writing to support them through uh, difficult life events and circumstances. Um, so I focus on a, a different theme each month. So last month it was empty nest syndrome and you can find that video here on my YouTube uh, channel. And please subscribe if you haven't already and then you don't miss a single one. There's lots of other offerings and short courses on here as well. Um, I'm open to suggestions if there's anything else, any other issues, life events or circumstances you would like to tackle. Um, as there is no doubt that the page really can be the writer's friend um, and the process of writing can off it, it just offers a wonderful outlet through tricky times. It doesn't, it doesn't just have the bonus of, of helping you as, as the writer but can also perhaps support somebody else perhaps going through something similar at, at a later date where you can share your writing with them. Um, so this month uh, we're going to focus on something very sad, uh, the loss of a pet, the inevitable price that's paid for the love and the companionship we share with animals. So right at the start of lockdown, one of the ladies on my uh, writer collection of poetry in a year course, she uh, lost her dog. Uh, and I remember feeling a huge sympathy and but thinking to myself at the same time that she did have a little bit of an emotional outlet through her writing, maybe just to help her a little bit through it. Um, and I was somebody who had never lost a pet uh, at that point, so I could only imagine what she must have been suffering. But then a fortnight later, my beloved dog of 11 years had to be put to sleep. Uh, and it was absolute agony, I won't lie. Um, so that first night of losing her, I tried to write a letter to her uh, just to get what I ma hadn't managed to say or to her off my chest um, because I didn't actually bring her home before uh, she died. She was let go while she was actually in the middle of an operation. Uh, an operation so that was all very difficult um, so it helped me to write that letter to her uh, later on that day um, and then I couldn't write anymore for about a month or so afterwards um, I've never dared read that letter back um, however two months on nearly three months on now I've been able to make her the subject of a sonnet um, which I'm going to share with you now. So it's very short, just a, a sonnet, which as you know has 14 lines, or as you may know has 14 lines, 10 syllables on each line and a very clear rhyming structure throughout. Um, and the title is We Didn't Say Goodbye. We didn't say goodbye. You could have taken me back for one last night until a final goodbye the next day. But to spare me the pain I couldn't have grasped, you just let me slip calmly away. If only I could have lived forever. I never wanted to leave you alone. My life was filled with the happiest days. I couldn't have wished for a better home. To remind me of the love you gave, a piece of your heart I've taken with me. Somehow, I'll still walk beside you. I'm part of your family. I'll always be. I did not want to see you cry. And that's why I left without saying goodbye. So to write this about her in, in retrospect did make me feel sort of closer to her and help me make sense of the jumbled emotions and feelings. Um, so that's the power of writing. Uh, and it also 
provides a lasting legacy for me to, to keep um, to, to her memory. Um, so of course when we pick apart something uh, through writing that's traumatised um, us, we can just do it for ourselves. There's nothing to suggest it ever has to see the light of day, but it is a really powerful process. Just um, bringing together the thoughts that, and the, the things, the words, the phrases, the emotions that you might want to include in a piece of writing and then weaving them together into something. So I'm going to make a few activity suggestions that might help other pet owners. Uh, it might help you to work from a, a picture of your pet if, if you can do that. So there's five suggestions here. So number one, as I have, as I've just demonstrated, you, uh, you could write a letter um, from the other side from your pet to you. So I've done that and I've presented it as a sonnet. Um, the second thing is you could write directly from your uh, to your pet, remembering the the time you spent together, which is what I did that first night. I lost her, and it was very helpful, very painful. Um, as I did last month, number three, when I talked about empty nest syndrome, you could write an inverted poem or or, or piece of prose where you start at the end and you work back to the beginning so you'd go from um, the, the, the point of losing your pet or just before right back to when they first came into your life um, and um, if you can't remember or you haven't seen it yet then go and take a look at the empty nest video that's uh, that was recorded last month here on YouTube. Number four uh, no doubt you'll have specific tales uh, and adventures to recount of time spent with your pet so you could bring these stories back to life as a as a mini short story collection you could even write them for, for a children's audience uh, number five write a diary entry of the first time you met your pet that could be a really nice thing to do and all these things are just so very therapeutic and like I say if you want to have a look at them in writing flick over to my blog and they're all there for you to refer back to or make a note of them here um, and you can revisit this video anytime you, you like. So the, these um, ideas, these writing ideas, they can be done at the time of the trauma if that helps or even in anticipation of it to kind of soften that blow uh, because it's inevitable when you're a, a pet owner and lover. For many writers they're probably best done as a reflection when a little bit of time has uh, elapsed. So a free writing approach could initially be used to capture that, that raw emotion and then it could be weaved into a poem, a reflective narrative or a piece of poetic prose. So I'm hoping nobody watching this uh, or listening to this um, is experiencing this right now because I know from personal experience how hard it is um, but perhaps if there's anything unresolved from your experience of losing a pet you might want to tackle this uh, retrospectively. So I guess the sad fact of having an animal as I've just said is their life expectancy is so much shorter than ours and the price we pay for, for, that, for their love and that, that wonderful relationship is the, is the eventual grief that we have to endure. So let me know in the comments or by dropping me an email to maria at mariafranklin.co.uk which writing activity you choose out of the, the list of those five and let me know how you get on with it, whether it's helpful. And I'll be back next month with a, another topic um, for writing to help yourself. We'll make it a little bit more optimistic next time. So we've dealt with loss of a pet this time and we dealt with empty nest syndrome last time, which are all a little bit to do with, with loss um, and quite deep subjects to tackle. So we'll, we'll explore the, the issues surrounding career change uh, through our writing in, in next months. And this can apply no matter what stage of life you're currently at um, and we can really apply this to uh, being a writer as well so don't miss that uh, and if you want even more optimism uh, you can check out the 12 days of uh, summer writing which is a free mini writing course here on my youtube channel it's just finished i've just posted the last uh, the 12th uh, summer writing prompt um, at this time of recording here in the 
in mid-June, uh, mid-July, sorry I'm losing track, we're just coming out of lockdown here in the UK and I've lost track of weeks, months, days and everything at the moment, um, so yes, um, check that out, um, it doesn't, you can begin that and take it at your own pace, um, if you've been affected by the, uh, the, the topic I've talked about in, uh, in this video, um, bluecross.org.uk is uh, a wonderful website which has um, a section that's all about pet bereavement and pet loss which will go into a bit more depth to help you with some phone numbers there as well. Um, so if you haven't already feel free to connect with me on social media, I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and uh, you can also support me on Patreon by coming across to www.patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com and searching for Maria Franklin and it'd be lovely to, to have you there as well. There's For my Patreon supporters there's uh, some, some free help sheets to do with the foundations of creative writing there's a, a monthly question and answer session uh, which is there to help you uh, and also you get a free uh, signed copy of one of my books after being a supporter for six months so it'd be great to see you there as well it, or on one of my um, social media channels so thank you for tuning in to this month's writing to help yourself um, I hope that for those of you who it's relevant to you find it helpful and useful and comforting I'm looking forward to hearing how you got on um, and I will see you next month for career change. Bye for now.